always remember when we are celebrating the birth whose birth we are celebrating man is consciousness and consciousness is never born never dies body comes into existence mind stays on in different forms but body mind is considered as one realm when body disappears a certain part of the mind also disappears and it is no more visible no more does it exist in its form that we know it becomes subtle even while living in the body sometimes the thoughts and the content of the mind become so subtle that it becomes difficult to capture them and these form the have the pattern of habits conditionings beyond all this is consciousness that you are if we are celebrating the birth of consciousness then it is erroneous it has to be said that consciousness this day assume the form of body mind realm that which was unmanifest became manifest and known it is when consciousness manifests as body mind realm it becomes known when your thoughts when your consciousness assumes the form of thoughts and the thoughts become action then it is known you may preserve a thought in your mind it will remain invisible only known to you and sometimes your thoughts are not known to you either because they are in the subtlest form only when consciousness assumes the form of thoughts and thoughts become action then you know so the consciousness that was always there assume the form of body mind realm on this day that we celebrate as birthday with this understanding you can do anything you can be a part of celebration you can celebrate but if this awareness is not there then celebration is meaningless any celebration without awareness is meaningless be it birthday celebration be it anything else will be meaningless on this day share your love share your awareness share your understanding with the people the light that is seen in the wilderness of your existence and sometimes it is close to you share that light as love in myriad forms its expression can be in myriad forms share it with this message on the birthday as we call of prem sutra i begin this message i would like to share with you in male female relation what is the role of awareness what is the role of thoughts remember thoughts are energy because no thought can exist or assume the form without the energy of awareness without awareness or energy it is the energy that is at play and cannot be destroyed it is the energy which you can call the unheard sound which you can call awareness a consciousness assumes the form of words when it interacts at the level of the mind it is an entire process as your sense organs the eyes the ears 
the hands the nose the tongue all these sense organs when these come in contact with the objects in the outer world there is a reaction this reaction can come through the center of heart it can come through the center of the mind it depends on when this interaction between your sense organs and the objects from the outer world is taking place where are you centered in heart or the mind or the center beyond the two beyond the two is the center of consciousness body has its own perception mind has its own way for instance you are walking down the road you suddenly see a flower and you say the flower is beautiful you do not know where this thought is coming from wait a little bit there is no need to be hurry and then try to observe that if this word the flower is beautiful is emerging out of the mind or out of the heart this will determine whether you are centered in the heart at that moment or you are centered in the mind because this process keeps on changing sometimes you are centered in a in your heart center next moment you move to the head center and the process continues when you are centered in your mind center then the arguments logic all these emerge you see something a flower or you meet a person instantaneously the streams of love overflow in your heart you come home somebody tells you something you immediately move to the heart center you begin to doubt your experience at that moment in the company of that person you have moved to the head this is a continuous process of shifting from the heart center to the the center of the mind mind means conditioning logic and the way of the society whenever you are thinking about it about the particular flower particular person particular thing you are in your mind center or head is the center of your being center at that moment then head becomes your complete existence as if the heart does not exist many times situation like these comes so there are two words one is bhav or feeling that emerges from the heart center or when you interact with that person with that object through your heart center you see a beautiful flower you meet a beautiful person you can interact through feeling or you can interact through thoughts when you are feeling the emotions bhav feeling in your heart in you then you are centered around the heart center if i say i love you and these words are emerging from the deepest core of my being then i am centered at that moment of thought expression in the heart center its source will be somewhere near the heart center if it is a mere thought then it emerges out of the head when you say that you like something or you love someone try to feel it deep within and then you will be able to know whether it is emerging from the head or from the heart try to enter into the process of feeling there is no need to rush 
you need to be patient there is no need to decide instantaneously wait and then you see that these words have not emerged out of your mind and when it says that is it really beautiful you have to go into your feeling and also try to understand that it is not out of habit you see somebody you say is nice how is the food deep within you are feeling something else but on the surface out of habit out of courtesy you say nice and you say nice in a very nicely manner nice with a gesture on your with a little broadening your lip movement opening up your jaws a little bit and say nice is it really nice or these words are emerging out of your heart or your mind they are merely words and you remember the words once you as they assume a form the words are live alive they never die because it is energy at play behind these words when you say to someone that you like this person you love him if these words emerge out of head the words are there the energy is there the energy is released in the cosmos you have to be very cautious in the use and the selection of the words that's why buddhas are very cautious in saying something to anyone you make a promise to someone this is what happens in relationships we make a promise to the person the promise has not emerged out of heart it is simply a word that has emerged from your head center the and words have been spoken the energy is there in the play it cannot be destroyed you have forgotten that too. now existence does not want anything to remain incomplete suppose you told me that you will come tomorrow if the words have emerged from your heart center you will make every effort to come but if it is coming out of your habit out of your mind out of conditioning you will forget these but the existence will not forget the words that you have made spoken to someone now suppose you die or i die those words did not effectuate suppose you made a promise to an elderly person now when you meet you met this person both of you are at a mature age you promised the person to do to give something but you could not fulfill the promise and death has occurred to you the words will remain the existence will never forget that that you as a part of the existence made a promise to this person then life's past then one day you assume the birth again come in the body mind realm you are a young person already married suddenly you spot that person whom you had made the promise the existence will bring you together in in, in one form or the other it is not certain that both of you will assume the life at the same time maybe that person has assumed the human form earlier or you have earlier and when you have met that person either you were already married or that person was already married but if there is a power within that knows beyond our knowings we are not aliens not as a strangers join we are bound to each other by a causeless force the soul recognizes the answering soul once you had made a promise the existence will remind you and you will feel a desire attraction towards that person but the society that your mind is 
but the society that your spouses will not understand this and your society has created many barriers in the fulfillment of in the fulfillment and continuation of soul's journey soul's journey continues when all your promises all these things have been fulfilled and you enter the ocean of life now you are going to fulfill that promise that you made many lives before you try to go and meet the person what happens society will create obstructions society will create all kind of barriers give it a uh, various names infidelity dishonesty cheating outside relations not understanding the cause behind it as long as you are in the body mind realm you will not be able to understand the cause hindu scriptures give many examples like these when people have remembered the past lives it happened in the life of buddha when he was not enlightened he went to a master called dipankar buddha almost 3000 years before he assumed the present form that we know as gautam the buddha dipankar was sitting in the congregation gautam went and it was a days ago for dipankar and gautam both gautam who was not enlightened then vowed down to dipankar as a matter of respect dipankar also got up from his seat and vowed down to gautam Gautam got perplexed he said master i am not enlightened my vowing to you is understood an unenlightened person is vowing to an enlightened one but i do not understand why are you vowing to me dipankar said i can see you are enlightened and when you will attain to that state of enlightenment i will not be alive that's why i am fulfilling that now a feeling has come into him that this person is enlightened i must respect respect to him dipankar did not wait for gautam to get enlightened because dipankar know that this was his last life and he will not be able to attain to any human form and respect and all those things can only be done through the body mind realm in the subtle form when you are in the bodiless existence you cannot do what you have to do otherwise he vowed down to him and when many centuries after nearly 3000 years when gautam buddha in the present form attained to enlightenment he remembered the words of dipankar buddha he turned his face to a particular direction and paid his obeisances paid his respect to the words of the pankar the hindu scriptures make a mention of one of the incarnations of the lord of trinity vishnu who assumed the form of krishna and ram in that particular incarnation in order to subjugate the atrocities of a demon king called bali he assumed the form of a midget a 10 year old boy the atrocities of this king bali was increasing but at that time there was something different than the present days although the atrocities of this man was increasing but yet still there was a spark of goodness in him that he was very benevolent if he had promised to give someone to something even it if it comes to giving his life he will fulfill his promise the promise was never empty the words had the meaning not empty words you make a promise to someone the words have no meaning but that time was different 
Even the man who was causing atrocities to humanity, his words was meaningful. If he had made a promise, then he was known as very, very kind and generous. If anyone came to him with a wish, that will be fulfilled. He will grant him that will. So, Vishnu, in order to subjugate and destroy the atrocities of this person, assumed the form of a boy, a ten-year-old boy, a beautiful boy coming to the king. His daughter Ratnamala saw him. She was a demoness. She was filled with so much love towards that person that a thought came to her mind, I wish I can breastfeed this child. When tremendous pangs of love arise in you towards a person, this is what happens there. Love expresses through the motherly instincts, I wish I could breastfeed this baby, this child. If you are a male, similar instincts may come to you. I wish this person was my mother and I could breastfeed her. I wish she could breastfeed me. That is the first attraction that happens at that level between the male and female energies. Remember the each individual be it a male or female, carries the spark of anima, animus or the male-female energies within him. Sometimes the male energies become dominant, other times the feminine energy becomes dominant. And this is what I was telling you from the very beginning. When you are centered in your head center, it is the masculine energy or the Shiva aspect is at play. And when your heart center is dominant, it is the feminine energy is at play. But rarely it happens there is a balance between male and female energies, the anima and animus within you. So with this person, the feeling emerged from a heart center. There was no balance that moment. It did not, the person Ratnamala only allowed her feelings to emerge out of heart center and these were not rationalized. Many times situations like these happen. All of a sudden you see a person, you are not aware why these thoughts, these feelings are arising in you. If you are, that is why I said wait a little while. There is no need to be in rush, be patient. And you will feel where this is emerging. Is it emerging from the surface or it is emerging from the deepest core of the being? Then you will know that it is, that if it is the promise that you had made in the past or you are now making it, a thought is emerging in you, what will be its repercussion if this thought is remained, thought remains unfulfilled? But remember that she could not fulfill that thought. It's a ten-year-old boy and that too not her own child. She could not have that thought fulfilled that emerged in her. Then the boy approached the king and asked for a piece of land that could be measured only in three steps. He said that he just want a little space, place to live for himself because he have no place and he is recluse. Needs a little space. Sometimes you may just tell, I just need a bed to sleep, that's all. How much space a bed will need? So he said that there, the, according to the scriptures, the land that can be measured in three steps, one for, that is a particular scriptural injunction behind it. So the king granted him the boon 
of giving him the land, the space that could be measured in three steps. When the boon was granted to him, he said, no, you have to make a proper promise. There is a way of Hindus when they make a promise, they take the water in the water goblet which has a spout something like your kettle. It has a handle on top, the water is there inside the kettle and there is a spout from where the water can come out. So when and that is considered to be that particular equipment or pot is called Kamandal. It is a very pious thing. The, it is something that you can say the Alauddin's lamp. It has a spout. It has a little opening, a little... If the kettle is basically round, if it becomes a little somewhat oblong, oblong, so the opening will be wider and the spout is there and on top there is a handle to hold it like a basket and it is filled with holy water then the person will look towards the sky pour a little bit of water on his right on his palm and then chant the mantras and repeat that promise then it is considered that it is now spiritual and the person will not back out from that promise. Otherwise, every day we make a promise and every next moment we forget it. We tell you, you tell someone that you will come this afternoon, you forget. That's it. So what is wrong in that? Anybody can forget that. But you remember that word that has emerged out of you is energy and cannot be destroyed. And if between those two, if you die, what will happen to those energy? That energy will remain unfulfilled. So when the promise was made, Vishnu, that 10 year old boy, assumed his cosmic form, cosmic form of the Lord. And in one step, he measured the entire earth. Then in two steps he measured all the cosmos, everything, there was no other place. Then he asked the king, where should I put the last, the third, where should I make my third step? The king now realized who he was and he offered his head, he said, now you put the third step on my head because this is the only thing that I have available and which is not part of this cosmos. When this happened, his daughter Ratmala was filled with rage, with anger, with hatred, and she wanted to kill this boy. Now the person is the same. Two types of emotions are emerging in her. First, the emotion of love that she wants to breastfeed this boy, and now she wants to kill this boy. Does it not happen to you many times? For the same person, a diverse set of emotions arise in you. When the person is doing things that you like, tremendous love arises in you. And next moment when the person defies you or defies your word or defies your expectations, the expectation is that this person should not love anyone else besides you. But if the person defies that, the jealousy, hatred arises in the person. And what happens in that state, thought will emerge. I wish I could kill him because he betrayed me. Now, what was going to happen to this thought? It will remain there. If you act out of this thought in this life and you kill that person, you know the consequences. The law will capture you. There is law for it. So, Ratnamala, the two types of thoughts emerged, but there was no way to fulfill any of these in that life. Many times we dislike a person 
A thought comes to kill that person but there is no opportunity. That thought remains unfulfilled and then all of a sudden the relationship comes to an end because one of these person dies or something else. Now that thought is there in the form of energy and it will grab you any time whenever there is an opportunity. So in the next life, one of the lives, when Vishnu assumed that Lord of Trinity, assumed the form of Krishna, then his uncle, who was a demon king, because of his atrocities, he tried to kill Krishna in many forms. There was a forecast that the eighth child of your sister will be the cause of your destruction. So he decided that he would kill the all the children of his sister. He is so strong that he can kill the newborn babies. They will, he will not allow them to grow to that strength that the child kills him. So Krishna, the story says, was transported to another foster parents where he was brought up. But this demon king called all his associates demons and made every possible attempt at, on the life of Krishna. This daughter of the king in the past lives, Ratnamala, had assumed the form as Putna, the demoness. Now, the king, the uncle of Krishna, sends her to kill Krishna. Now, the two boon thoughts that has emerged in her in the previous life, when she wanted to, because of her love or emotions, she wanted to breastfeed and then she wanted to kill, have to be fulfilled. How can these two levels of two energies can be dissolved. So she comes, now Krishna is an infant, how can she emerge to come there? She comes to the place where he was living with his foster parents. She comes with the poison smeared on her breast. She comes with poison smeared on her breast now with this, she come with the intention of breastfeeding the child. That is fulfilled. Because she comes with the poison smeared on her breast to breastfeed. So firstly she will breastfeed the child. And in breastfeeding with the poison smeared on the breast, the child will be killed as well. The two thoughts of breastfeeding the child and when anger arose and she wanted to kill the child can be fulfilled with one incident. Breast feeding the child with poison smeared on the breast. Two different thoughts now needs to be fulfilled. But because this thought has emerged in that demoness towards an enlightened master, what will happen? Now imagine the situation. If a thought in your mind arises of enmity or animosity towards an enlightened one, if that thought has emerged in you of animosity against an enlightened one, enlightenment means the anima animus in that person, the male female energies, the energy of head and the energy of heart has balanced one another and in balancing the two there is transcendence. He will not respond to your thought in that way as counter reaction counteraction, in fact there will not be any reaction in him. Instead there will be a response. He will be able to see where this thought is emerging from, from the 
past and he will try to dissolve it in his own way. Hindus call this as moksha, salvation. So when she comes with that intention of killing Krishna through breastfeeding him, Krishna realized, the enlightened one realized who this person was. Why has this person approached me? Immediately the entire scene of the past flashed in front of his eyes. This is what happens to the enlightened one when something like a deja vu happens. When a person comes to him, immediately everything flashes and in that your unconsciousness is flashed and that's where the journey of transcendence, the journey of transformation begins. Krishna realized this as she comes to breastfeed, exposed herself to breastfeed him. Krishna, which is a normal thing when a mother breastfeed the child, the child holds on to the breast. Krishna did the same thing as an innocent child will do and he squeezed the breast with his infinite might and in that the demoness was killed. She came with the intention of killing Krishna but instead Krishna squeezed her breast with so much of might that the life force exited from her and this Death in the hands of the enlightened one, in the hands of God himself, as Krishna is considered, is known as salvation. The, that particular thought that was emerging in your mind, that has once emerged in you and remained a thought, it did not emerge out of your totality of the being, the meditative state, it has to be dissolved in the existence and that person, that demon is attained to salvation. These are not mere stories, mythological stories. These are the ways of the enlightened masters and these are the examples how one should live one's life, how to interact into the world with the other person, be it of the same sex or the opposite. It has to be out of meditativeness so that you do not accumulate any more actions. This is what the Hindu way of saying is, this life is given to you to dissolve all your past thoughts which is termed commonly as karmas, to dissolve the past karmas and allow each and every thought or action emerge out of awareness. Each and every thought of yours now, because you are moving along the path of inward journey, each thought, each feeling, must emerge out of the union of anima animus, out of your meditativeness. When anima and animus balance one another, this is the state of meditativeness and out of that awareness is born in you and you live with that awareness. You will not speak superfluously, you will not speak when it is not necessary and you will, before a word emerges out of you, you will be able to know the state where your energy is at that center and from which center this word is emerging from. This is the way of fruition in male-female relation. This is the fruition of male-female energy, that your male and female energy balances one another and you attain to transcendence. That is the way of 
people on the path. Let this be the message and for this morning this is all. Take care.